Today we're going to be talking about graphing linear inequalities. When graphing linear ine inequalities, one thing that we need to make note of is slope-intercept form. Graphing from slope-intercept form is one of the easiest ways to graph, so let's kind of break that down and go from there. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, m being your slope, and b being your y-intercept. Now, when graphing, it's good to have these two things because all we have to do is plot the y-intercept and then do the slope. So a couple of things to make note of. When graphing from slope-intercept form, we're always going to start with the y-intercept. And remember, the y-intercept is always on the y-axis. Y-intercept, y-axis. Then from there, we do the slope. And based on the slope, we're either going to go up, down, and depending on which direction. So a couple of things to also make note of. For the slope, if the slope is positive, then you're going to go up and to the right. If the slope is negative, then you're going to go down and to the right. So it is just kind of as simply noting that if it's positive, we're going to go up. If it's negative, we're going to go down. Notice that both are going to the right. Now, when we graph, you will see that there is the ability to go the complete opposite direction if you're aiming to get a full range for your graph. So let's try some examples, but before that, there's a couple of things to remember when working with inequalities. Some key things to remember when working with inequalities is that when we're rearranging inequalities, you do have to remember to flip the sign whenever you divide or multiply both sides by a negative. So if you're rearranging it to get it, the inequality into slope-intercept form, you do have to remember if you ever divide or multiply both sides by a negative, you are going to need to flip that sign. Now, a couple general things to remember um, that hold true for the most part is when you're graphing, our lines may be different now. So normally when we graph an equation, we always just graph a line. It's just a solid line. But with inequalities, we could end up having a solid line or a dashed line. And that just really kind of depends on the solution. If it's if the, the inequality sign, if it's equal to, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, notice that when it's equal to, then the graph is solid, kind of implying that every single point on that line is part of the solution. Now, if it's not equal to, aka greater than or just less than, then that's when we have a dashed line. And we have a dashed line because it's telling you that every point on that line is actually not a solution. It doesn't make the inequality true. And so we do have to be a little bit careful of that when graphing. The other thing that we have to do that's different than graphing an uh, equation is that we usually have to shade, okay? And that shading area represents our solution area. All those points in the shaded region represent solutions. And usually if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, we're gonna shade above if it's less than or less than or equal to, we're gonna shade below. But I will show you another way using a test point that you can determine which side to shade. So let's try some examples. So for our first one, we have, they want us to graph y is equal to, uh, greater than or equal to 3x minus two. And now I do notice it is in slope intercept form. So I have my slope, which in this particular case is three, and I have my y-intercept, which is negative two. Now, based on what I just stated earlier, the y-intercept is where we start, and it's always on the y-axis. So at negative two on the y-axis, that is where I start. The slope is what I do next. 
Now, it is nice to write the whole numbers as fractions, and we can always write it as 3 over 1 or the whole number over 1. And do recall that when the slope is positive, that means to go up and to the right. So from my starting point, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and right 1. And up 3, 1, 2, 3, and right 1. And I continue that as far as I can go. Now remember, you can do the complete opposite, okay? So instead of going up and to the right, I can go down and to the left. So if I go down, one, two, three, and left one, and down, one, two, three, and left one, that will give me uh, a graph that's all the way across our entire plane. Now, before we draw the line, because if this was an equation, we would just draw a straight line, okay? I do have to determine, is this line going to be a solid line or is it going to be a dashed line? And the way I determine that is based on the inequality symbol. Now, because it is equal to, it says greater than or equal to, because it is equal to, that will imply that my line is going to be solid. Because when it's equal to, it's saying that every point on the line will be a part of our solution. So I go ahead and draw my line, and it will be a solid line. Now, where to graph? Again, you can kind of use the general rule that if it's greater than, you're going to shade above, which would be everything up here. But I'm going to show you how to do that using a test point. So how you use a test point. A test point will kind of guide you on letting you know if you shaded in the correct area. Because if you use your test point and you plug it in to the inequality, and it comes out true, then you know you have shaded the right area because every point in the shaded region will make the inequality true. Now, every point that is not in the shaded region would make the inequality false. And so we'll double check this and I'll talk about it and explain it a little bit more. So when choosing a test point, do make sure you do not, I repeat, do not choose a point that is on the line. You have to choose a point off the line. And it can be anywhere. It can be right here, right there, right there, right there, right there. Anywhere on this graph, you can choose a point as long as it is not on the line. I tend to aim for the easiest test points. I notice that zero, zero is not on my line. And I like that because I like small numbers to work with. So I'm going to use the test point zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my inequality and I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. And I'm going to see if it makes the inequality true. Because if it makes the inequality true, it lets me know that this side should be the side with the shaded region. Because every point on this side would make it true. However, if I plug in this point and it comes out false, it lets me know this side is not the right side. I need to shade the other side. So we'll see when we plug it in. So we take y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 2. And as I said, we're going to replace x and y with our point. So I plug in 0. And I simplify. 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 2 is a negative 2. And when I get down to the end, I have to determine, is this true or is this false? Did my point make the inequality true or false? It looks like it's true because, yes, 0 is greater than negative 2. Now, because it's true, it's telling me that this is the correct side to shade. So this is where we're going to do all our shading. Every single point in this shaded area is a solution to the inequality, as well as every point that is on the line. Okay. Now, all the points over here, these are not solutions. You could plug in a point and check it out. You would see it would make the inequality false. Okay, but this is how I know which side to shade. So because my point came out true, I know to shade the side it was on. If it came out false, I would have shaded the other side. Okay. So this is how you graph 
and inequality. And again, remember, what does all this represent? The solid line means every single point on here is an actual solution to this inequality. The shaded area means every single point in this shaded area is a solution to this inequality. And it also states that everything over here, nope, these are not solutions. That's why it's not shaded. All right, let's go ahead and have you try one on your own. So hopefully you tried this on your own. If you tried this on your own, this is what your graph should have looked like. So again, you should have started at positive three, that is the y-intercept, and then your slope was negative, which means down and to the right, so we would have went down two and right one and down two and right one. Again, notice how this one, and make sure you got that correct, is a dashed line meaning any point on this line is actually not a solution to this inequality. Okay, that's why we had to represent it with a dashed line. And how did I know it was a dashed line? Because it was not equal to. But everything in this shaded area is part of our solution. So any point in here is part of the solution. So again, make sure you got everything correct. Make sure you shaded the correct way. Make sure you did the slope correctly and make sure you have a dashed line. So let's try another one of those. So we have y is less than 1 half x minus 4. So again, I like to break it down. The slope in this particular case is one half. The y-intercept is negative four. So remember, I always start with the y-intercept. So at negative four on our y-axis, y-intercept, y-axis, that is where we start. The slope is positive, so that means I'm going to go up and to the right. And so from my point, I'm gonna go up one and right two, and up one and right two, and I go as far as I need to go, and I could go the complete opposite, and that's down one and left two, down one and left two, again going as far as I need to go. Then from here, we have to decide, is it going to be a solid or dashed line? That's where I go to the inequality symbol. I notice that it is not equal to that means that every point on this line is not part of the solution. So that means it's going to be a dashed line. So I'll go ahead and draw a dashed line to represent this. Then I have to determine if I'm shading above or below. Again, you can use a test point, or again, knowing that it is less than, less than would mean below the line. And I will show you both, but I'm going to shade below the line just to remind you. If we base it off the re little reminder that we did earlier, okay, this is where I would be shading. Now, again, just to show you how I know I'm correct, if I use the test point. Let's say I went back to that test point, zero, zero, because I like that test point. It's an easy one to plug in. So if I plugged in zero, zero and into my inequality, I would get y is less than 1 half x minus 4. I plug in for x and for y, and I simplify. I get 0 is less than, well, 1 half times 0 is 0, and so I get negative 4 here. And in this particular case, 0 is not less than negative 4. This is a false statement. And so this is the reason I knew that I can't shade on this side because I can't have a false statement. That means that this point is not a solution because if it was a solution, it would make the inequality true. And so that's how I know I had to shade the other side. But again, you could just use the basic reminder that if it's less than, you can shade below. If it's greater than, you shade above. But this was just a little helpful view to make sure if you did a test point, this is what I mean by if it did come out false, 
we couldn't shade the side that it's on, we actually would have had to shade the other side of the graph. All right, try one of those on your own. And again, remember, if you need to use a test point, it's helpful. If not, you can just try to use the little reminder. So hopefully as you've worked it out, this is what you got. So again, you should have started at positive one. The slope was negative, so that would be down two and right three and down two and right three. It was equal to, so that's why it's a solid line there, and everything greater than everything above the graph. So make sure you got all parts of that correct. Okay. All right, then we have some kind of special cases. They always have special cases. In this particular case, we have y is greater than 3. Now, notice here that I don't have an x. Really, in this particular case, the slope is actually 0. And the y-intercept is 3. So how does that really help me? Well, whenever you have this particular special case, this is where, well, the y-intercept is 3. So here's where y is equal to 3. Okay, But we have to think about it a little bit more because every single point across left and right is where y is, in a sense, equal to 3. This is that graph that is a horizontal line. Okay. Whenever you have it where there is no x and just a y, you're going to have a horizontal line. It's going to go straight across left to right. Now, it, does, it is going to go through 3. That is where it is going through. But the main thing we have to decide, again, remembering, is this line going to be solid or dashed? I go to my inequality symbol. I notice it is not equal to. So that means when I go across this, it's going to be a dashed line the entire time. So all the way across here, I get my horizontal line. Okay, And it's dashed because it's not equal to. Nothing on there. But it does say every y value should be greater than 3. Again, greater than is above, and so that's where we would shade above the graph. And so every point that is above that would be our solution. And again, you could use the test point, because if we did the test point, and I'll show you just real quick, if I tested 0, 0, again, that's that point right there, and I plugged in to the inequality, 0 is not greater than 3. This is false. So again, because this is false, I cannot shade this side. Okay, because this is false, I cannot shade this side. So I have to shade the other side. And that's, again, if you use the test point. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and try the other special case? So hopefully as you work that out, this is what you got. In this particular case, there's no y, but there is an x. And in this particular one, this is actually a vertical line. Okay, straight up and straight down is the kind of graph that we get. In this particular case, it was negative four. It is equal to, that's why we have the solid line, and it says all values that are less than negative 4. Well, negative 5 is less than negative 4. Negative 6 is. Negative 7 is. Negative 8 is. That's why we shaded to the left in this particular case. Okay? Now, there will be some inequalities that we deal with that we're going to have to rearrange, just like the equation ones. we got to rearrange them and put them into slope-intercept form. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take the inequality and put it into slope-intercept form. 
So again, reminding you of slope intercept form, that is y equals mx plus b. So basically, I am trying to get y all by itself. So I do some inver inverse operations. I go ahead and move the 3x to the other side. I get negative 2y is greater than negative 3x plus 4. I'm prepping it to be in slope intercept form. Got to get rid of this negative 2. So I go ahead and use the inverse operation of division. Now this is one of those key things we have to remember. Remember I said to make note that if you divide or multiply by a negative, in this particular case, we are dividing everything by a negative. That means I have to flip the sign. Okay, so no longer is it going to be greater than, it will now be less than. Okay, that's that one special key thing we have to remember when rearranging. And so I get y is less than, well, negative and a negative make a positive, so that's 3 halves x, and 4 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 2. So now that I have rearranged it, now I can go ahead and graph. So I start at negative 2, which is the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept. And then the slope, in this particular case, is 3 over 2. Being that it's positive, that means up and to the right. So from there, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and right 2. 1, 2, 3, and right 2. And again, you can go as far as you need to, and you can do the complete opposite. So once I have that, again, think to yourself, is this going to be a solid or dash line? Hopefully you thought dash. Because it's not equal to, then we know that line is not going to be equal to. It can't be true. Nothing, no point on that line is true. So because it's not, we have to do our dash. And lastly, it is less than, so I'm looking at the final version. Okay, that's the version I look at. This is the point that determines that. Now again, maybe you thought you were gonna do this and you shaded above, be careful. So this is where it would be a good idea to do a test point, okay? Because now you're seeing that we have two different signs and I don't know, am I supposed to graph above or am I supposed to graph below? So let's just do a test point just to make sure we're 100% sure on which side we should graph. So I'm gonna test again, zero, zero. It's an easy one, it's not on the graph, or it's not on the line. So I plug in, and you can plug into either one. So I'm gonna plug into our original. So I'm gonna take three X minus two Y is greater than four, and I'm gonna plug in zero for X and for Y. Well, what's nice here is three times zero is zero, two times zero is zero, so basically this whole side becomes zero, and I get zero is greater than four. This is false. So that means this is not the correct side. This is false. This is not the correct side. That means the other side should be the side that should be shaded, which matches up to what we had here, right? Less than. Everything less than the graph was everything below the graph. Okay? So if you're unsure about which side to shade, go to that test point. Okay, it's very helpful. It can guide you in which uh, which way you should be shading. All right. Let's try one of these on your own. As you work through this, hopefully this is how you rearranged it. And again, making sure you graph, checking that your line is solid, that you shaded the correct way, and just double check your work. Remember, if you ever miss anything, always double check your work. All right, the very last problem we're going to do is a little bit different, just to kind of represent one way to think about stuff. What if you were given the actual graph? Sorry, it's a little hard to see. This was supposed to be shaded. So let me shade it for you. So imagine you were given this graph and they want you to write an inequality for it. Well, remember, we've been writing everything in slope-intercept form. So I kind of need two things 
to write it in slope-intercept form. I need a slope, and I need the y-intercept. Well, to me, the easiest one to start with is the y-intercept, right? Because it's always on the y-axis. So where does it cross the y-axis? It looks like right there at 1, 2, at positive 2, that is where it crosses the y-axis. Bam, right there, right? Y-intercept, y-axis. Then I just got to find the slope. So I find two solid points. Now, I notice that this is one solid one and this is one. So it looks like I go up 1, 2, 3, a rise of 3, and over 1. Rise over run. Okay, now to double check my slope, I got to determine if it's positive or negative. It looks like it's rising from left to right, so that means it is positive. So just to simplify it, we have a slope of 3. Now, I am writing an inequality, so I can't just write an equal sign. So I have to determine that, because right now we have this part. We have the 3x plus 2. And we can't have an equal sign here, right? Normally it would be an equal sign, but we are writing an inequality, not an equal sign. We're not writing an equation, we're writing an inequality. So that determines now, okay, remember the shading and the line. That kind of helped me. It looks like it's shading below. And below was always a less than. Now, the line also determined whether it was solid or dash. And when it was solid, that's when it was always equal to. And thus, I have now created an inequality that represents the graph, right? Now, again, if this was dash, we wouldn't have had the equal to here. Again, if this was on this side, if the shading was on the other side, it was greater than, um, greater than the graph, then we would have had a greater than symbol. But that's how you represent an inequality given a graph. I hope this helps you out. Um, if you have questions, you know, make sure you really go back and watch the videos a couple of times uh, to see what, where you missed up, where you messed up. Make sure you're using your test points and good luck.